In AutoCAD, other than the actual design or drawing of your objects, text might be the next most important item in a drawing. Without proper text that's readable, clear, and accurate, it's impossible to actually use or construct anything from drawings. In today's video, I'm going to share seven of my favorite tips and tricks for improving your text game in AutoCAD. Everything from making things clearer to more accurate and easier and faster along the way. Let's jump right into today's video. So first up, and we're not going to spend a ton of time on this since many users already know it, but if you're not already, make sure you understand and are using annotative text for the majority of the text within your drawings. Now, annotative text means that the text in your drawing or model space is going to scale and automatically resize based on the scale of your viewport within your layout. So what this means is that the text here is going to remain the same size regardless if you're zoomed in on a tighter scale or zoomed out on a wider scale. Now this is especially useful if you've got multiple viewports in a layout, one like this one here, and then say you had a blow up or additional view to the right here. The text would remain the same size between the two regardless of the zoom level of the two viewports. So I'll show you an example with this single viewport here. You can see the text is all a pretty standard height. This is probably eighth inch or quarter inch height text on paper space. And if we double click within this viewport here, we can click this unlock or lock icon to be able to move around our viewport. And you can see that I'm at quarter inch equals one foot. Now, if we zoom in here, so I'm just going to zoom in by going to say three eighths inch, and you can see that the text has disappeared. Now, if you click this little scale bar uh, icon down here, it's the end view of a scale bar, it's going to turn on all of the text that is annotative within your drawing. Now, these pieces of text, if I deselect these, these pieces of text are not showing up because the scale is not properly set to this viewport scale. So if I select my pieces of text that I want to update and right click and go to annotative object scale and click add scale, you can see it's now added the 3 8 inch equals one foot scale to those pieces of text and those pieces of text alone. So now if we uncheck that scale bar uh, icon, it's only going to show text that is at the proper scale and has this scale added. This also allows you to display specific pieces of text or dimensions in one viewport that don't show up at another viewport at a different scale. Now this might be a little tricky at first to fully understand uh, and that's why I highly recommend learning more about annotative text. I've got a ton of videos on my channel about it as well as we deep dive in it a bunch more as well as setting up annotative styles in my AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows course which which is now available as a larger overall package called the CAD Toolbox. In it, you're going to get my fundamentals course. You're also going to get my Kickstart AutoCAD beginners course, as well as a ton of title block templates, cheat sheets, and productivity videos, all included in one package. That link is going to be down below for you to check out. But moving on, so if you're not already, make sure you're using annotative text. So I'll show you another example here. We're going to zoom back out to that one quarter inch equals one foot. And you can see that all of the text heights have stayed the same, but the other ones have now shown up. So the nice thing with this is regardless of what scale you're at, you're going to get the correct paper space height text. No more messing around with those heights on individual pieces of text or adding extra labels to your layouts. This is all automatic and it's gonna show up in model space and in your viewports. All right, so moving on to the next text tip that is gonna save you a ton of time and make your text a lot easier and that is creating custom styles for all of your text so to do that you can go up to the annotate to tab up here and these flyouts in the bottom right of each of these boxes are going to allow you to create and edit the existing styles or create new styles within AutoCAD so this first one here is for your multi-line text again you can click this little flyout it's gonna create your text style dialog box. So you can see I have a few already in this drawing, an annotative style, which has this box checked on. Again, you can learn more about that in my other videos. It's got a Roman font 
style and a standard font style. Now you can simply create a new style at any time and customize it the way you'd like. You can add settings, width factors, heights, fonts, and styles to each one. You can have, say, a larger bolded one or underlined one for titles and typical callouts. Uh, you can also have smaller pieces of text for notes and minor details. Now, the key with having these styles is that they'll save you time when you're creating new objects. Choosing a style and then selecting the dimension or multi-line text or multi-leader and then going to create it is going to create an object already set to that style now selecting any piece of text you're going to be able to pull up your properties menu by holding control and tapping one or right clicking and choosing properties and you can check which style is being used each one is going to have different settings and sizes you can change the accuracy the decimal places the font the units, all of that can be customized in those styles. So having custom styles set up for the various different typical types of text you have is gonna be a huge time saver. Now, here's a cool trick that if you don't know it already is gonna save you a ton of time. If you've got, say, a drawing like this one here, where I've set up these pieces of text the way I like. They have annotative turned on, they're on the right, uh, they have the right font, the right size, all of the right settings. You can simply select any one of your pieces of text, right click, and you can create a style from it. So I'm going to create a new dimension style. So I'm gonna right click on this text, select save as new style, and now I can simply create example style. So now if I go to the drop down here, example is going to show up. You can choose your layer. I'm gonna put it on the dimensions layer. And now I can come in here and instantly create text that keeps it to the same style, size, and units as the existing text within my drawing. And now I've got that style here saved. Now, if you wanted to take that one step further, once you've got a drawing that has all of your blocks, all of your textiles, all of your layers and title blocks and layouts set up, save that as a DWT, which is an AutoCAD template file. You're now going to be able to use that to start any of your new drawings and already have all of your styles, text, labels, layers, and more set up and ready to go for your new drawing. All right, so the next main tip with AutoCAD and text is to use M text over simple D text or plain text. Now, this can be a little confusing at first, but almost every command in AutoCAD has a few options. Now, in our case, you could just type in text and you're going to get a simple text block. So you can see I've just clicked around and I've got text at a weird angle because I just clicked an odd angle. And now it's just a single line object of text. That was from typing in simply the word text. Now, mText is a much better version. This is like the smart version of text within AutoCAD. It's gonna allow you to create a window there. Uh, again, you could do this just from up here in the annotate tab, multi-line text. But what most people end up doing is typing in things like text, and then you're gonna end up with plain text. The difference is that multi-line text or M text allows a lot more formatting. So not only can you type in whatever you want, adjust your text box as needed, you can also highlight your text and up in the text editor, you have a ton more options. Not only do you have multiple lines as an option, so you can see here I can hit enter and keep going, but if I highlight everything with control A there, I can now change it to a style that I prefer. I can also adjust individual pieces of text. I can adjust it all. I can change its font. We're gonna go down to quarter inch there. We can make it all bold and underlined. Now, this allows for way more customization and consistency throughout your drawings. It also lets you easily create coherent notes and tables and specification sheets within AutoCAD, just like you're using a Word document. Double clicking inside of this M text is going to allow you to edit things, create bullets, numbered lists, and a ton more. Up at the top here, you can also adjust line spacing and justification just as easily as you can in Word. So all of these options are not available with plain AutoCAD text or just typing in text. Make sure you use that mText command for a ton more options. Next up and 
kind of similar to mText is that you can actually justify and place text with a lot of accuracy. By grabbing this corner blue vertex box, you can move your text around. You've also got the ability to shrink and uh, expand that text box at any point if you need to. But being able to change the justification as well as align things to lines within AutoCAD is a great time saver and allows you to create uh, aligned and clean looking legends and note sections. So if I wanted to create, say, a legend, you could draw on the def points layer, DEF points. That's a layer of objects that are not going to plot. But what you could do is create uh, some construction lines like these ones here. So if I wanted to create a gridded set of lines kind of like this, so maybe each of these is a legend item and I've got a bunch of pieces of text, you can align these by snapping things to those lines by using that blue box. So you can see here I can move my new contours and I can snap it right there. This allows me to keep things consistent and accurately place pieces of text. So just don't forget that you have that option. You can actually also change where that blue box is going to be oriented by changing up the justification up here. So if you select a piece of text and choose say middle center, it's now going to place that box in the middle center of your text object. If you'd like it to snap just to the middle of the text, you can do that as well by simply adjusting your text box to the proper size. And now you can see we've got a box, a vertex point in the middle of our text if we'd like to align things in that way. Next up is the fact that you can use the match properties command with text as well. Not only will this match up styles and sizes, but it's also going to change up the layers and coloring to match other text. So if you type in MA for match properties and choose the source or the one you want to keep, then you can simply click around and match all of the other text within your drawing so that all of those settings and properties are aligned and equal. This way, all of your text is going to appear more consistent and match any company standards that you might have, even if you forgot to set the layers when you're creating them. Now, moving on to one of my favorites, and that is customizing M leaders, uh, in particular, making them stand out. So. If you've got a busy drawing and you're not entirely sure how to make things stand out, using text boxes or text frames within AutoCAD is a great way to show proposed works or more important items. So I'm just creating a uh, multi-leader here. I'm going to use that MA command to match the properties here to my black title block or text layer. but what I'd like to do is make this text really stand out within the drawing. So to do that, I'm going to go to the properties when I've got my multi-leader or M text selected, and I'm simply going to turn on text frame. Now you can change up the color and settings and line weights and stuff for in your properties. But for the most part, adding a text frame is going to highlight a specific point of your design. So I'll tend to use on busy site plans these text boxes around my proposed features, and I won't put them on existing or less important features within the drawing. This allows the reader's eye to go to this text, and it makes things a lot more clear when it comes to reading your drawings. Now, similarly, if you want to make drawings clear, the last tip here is going to save you a ton of time, and that is adding a background mask to your text automatically. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. For most text, you can simply double click on it, select the text, and click on the mask button up here to bring up the dialog box. Making sure to check both of these boxes and this one in particular to use the background color. This is going to create a white, typically, text box in behind your text so that things show up even when they're on top of, say, a hatched or colored in deck like this one. This label now is much more visible. It's automatically got that background mask added to it. 
And you can do this by the properties menu as well. So you can see this dimension here kind of gets hidden in the hatching. If I go to the properties flyout here and I scroll down to text, I have the ability to add a fill color. This is the same as that background mask. I'm going to choose background as my fill color. And now wherever this uh, dimension goes, it's always going to have that background mask added to it automatically. Now, this is going to make your drawings much more readable and your text a lot more clear, especially when you're working with very busy and confusing drawings where you want a few specific items to stand out more than another. So that's it for my quick video on some easy and simple text tips and tricks that are going to improve your drawings instantly. If you like this video and you want to keep getting more in your inbox, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, check out my complete CAD toolbox, including my AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows course, as well as the AutoCAD Kickstart beginners course. Both of those can be found at the link down below right now, discounted for viewers such as yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and cheers.